What's going on everybody? It's Mitsuni Nika. Welcome back to another video. How's everybody's day going? And Under the Mail has recently dropped a response video to everyone who has covered him talking about his Elden Ring stream, the fact that he wants every game to be like Doom Eternal, his criticisms of Ultra Kill and how he doesn't hate the game and a few other darn things. And I gotta say, his response video was absolutely fucking terrible. Like, he literally just deflects some points, and then he also goes on to say that he was drunk during the Elden Ring stream, so all of that stuff that he was saying or how he was acting during the stream, you should just disregard that, you know, because he wasn't in the right state of mind and a few other stuff. We're going to be touching into a few points from this darn video and covering it and just seeing exactly why his response is absolutely terrible. So if you guys are down for that, you ready for that, let's get right into this video. Isn't it always fun to do response videos to response videos? No one wins in these things, and I usually don't do them because it's a waste of time. If you're someone who just hates everything I do, this isn't going to change your opinion about much. This is for the people who genuinely want to know what my response is to this stuff. So for everyone willing to allow me to clarify and correct some things being said, including a pretty disgusting lie, well, here we go. There certainly has been a lot of drama surrounding my channel between the games of Ultra Kill and Elden Ring. We'll start with Elden Ring. If you're not one of my regular Twitch viewers, you probably have a very different idea of what happened than the people who are. A little background, I do not have nearly the presence on Twitch that I do on YouTube. I get maybe 70 viewers if I play Doom, and 20 to 40 if I play anything else. I play shooters, Streets of Rage 4, Sifu, and Resident Evil, occasionally a new title. I average about 30 to 40 subscribers. I stream one or two days a week on random days at random times. I don't take it very seriously. It's a way to keep up with a small amount of dedicated, interested viewers. That's the first bit of context. Next, my viewers know that I am not a fan of Souls games. I don't say they're bad, I've never said they're bad. They're probably quite good. They're just filled with stuff I don't personally like. Let's disprove this point right here where he says that he doesn't think the Souls games or he doesn't think that Elden Ring is apparently bad and that he believes that they are probably quite good. Now, for all of those who watch his videos and who watch his streams and stuff, you would know that during his Elden Ring disaster stream, he quite literally said that he would rather be playing something that's shooting and that game would rather be Outriders, which for you guys that don't know and have not seen his Outriders video is a game that he considered to be one of the worst games of 2021. He literally said that this game was absolutely awful, terrible, had brain dead AI here. I'm gonna put a screenshot up here of the video where he discussed Outriders at on the screen where he literally says that Outriders is completely terrible and he hates it. Yet during his Elden Ring stream, what does he say that he would rather be playing Outriders instead of Elden Ring because he likes shooters? So, using that darn logic right there, you telling me that you would get more enjoyment out of playing a game that you deem to be absolutely fucking terrible and you hate than a game that you think might actually be good and is supposed to be well designed but you don't want to insult the darn game. And here's the clip right here for context for those of you who don't believe me where he literally said he would rather play Outriders than Elden Ring. This or Outriders? Well, I would rather, I'd rather play Outriders because I like shooters. I don't like this kind of melee combat. I'm not into the large RPG elements. I'm not a fan of the pacing of the combat. And I'm not big on medieval fantasy. Castles and dragons and skeleton soldiers. I don't hate it, but I'd rather be in a spaceship than a castle. I've played enough from software titles to know that it's not for me, and that's okay. And it doesn't matter how much more I play of it, or how much better I get at it. It's not my thing. I'm sure not all of you are into survival horror, or boomer shooters, or puzzle games, or building sims, and that's fine. We all have our tastes. Yeah, and you want to know what my tastes are under the mail? Is that I'm into any single game genre, okay? I'm into every game genre that is out there. As long as there's a good game in that genre, you best believe I'm going to play it. I don't limit myself to just a few singular uh, genres at all, you know. There are a few genres that I like more than others, like JRPGs, Hack and Slash, and FPS games are my three favorite type of genres. But I like every single game genre, alright? I, I'm willing to play any game in any genre as long as the game is good. All of this is why I had zero interest in playing Elden Ring, much less on stream or doing a video on it. Flash forward to the summer, and a viewer actually gifted me Elden Ring. 
and I said, okay, okay, I'll play it. I am at least curious to see some of it, since it's such a large title of our generation. I don't want to stream it, because that'll be a miserable disaster. Yet you fucking streamed anyway. <laughs> this shit writes itself, people. Do you hear this? He knew it was going to be a disaster, yet he still did this anyway. I mean, you literally called this upon yourself. Like I said in my previous video, nobody forced you to do this under the mail. You did this to yourself. You set up the stream. You set up the donation goal. You set up the charity, you know. Y you did all of this to yourself, man, okay? Sure, your subscribers and your viewers were asking you to play Elden Ring a lot. But you literally could have just told them you're not into Souls games and you will never probably be into them or you don't want to play them. And you could have just fucking moved on. And I don't know, stream Doom Eternal, but no. Like you just said right here, you knew it was going to be a disaster, yet you still did it anyway. And here we are now. But my viewers like to watch me suffer. Anytime I play something I don't really like on stream, the chat gets a kick out of my misery. I guess I'm entertaining when I'm miserable. So I said, hey, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to make sure something positive comes out of it. So through June and July, I set a donation goal for a charity I believe in, Doctors Without Borders, for $250. They're a great organization, check them out please. The deal was $250 for charity in exchange for a 5 hour Elden Ring stream. And then I never have to think about Elden Ring ever again. We hit the goal and celebrated with a post on my YouTube community page dated here before the stream, announcing the stream time if anyone else wanted to join in and watch the horror. I suppose that was a mistake. I grabbed a bottle of whiskey and set out to play Elden Ring. Open-minded at first, I went through the training area, figuring out how to play, and then I went out into the world. And pretty quickly I started to lose interest, because this isn't my kind of game. But hey, the people paid for 5 hours, so they'll get it. This is one of the things that people had came to my video and pointing out to me after watching my video on Under the Mail that I dropped. Where they were saying that during his live stream, he actually did set up a charity donation for Doctors with Borders. But then he also had a secondary donation goal, and that was for his viewers to help him get a PS5. Now, while the charity was an actual thing, and he wasn't just begging people for a PS5 solely, you know. Which, that is a very good thing for him to set up a donation goal for Doctors with Borders. It's very good. However, his secondary goal for him to get a PS5 from his viewers donating money to him, and for him to keep playing Elden Ring as long as he keeps getting donated money, is still ridiculous and kind of shitty, if you ask me. First of all, under the mail, you're a YouTuber with over 100k subscribers, and you get tons of views on your videos, okay? You're monetized, okay? I'm pretty sure you got channel donations and tier subs and stuff set up, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong about that. You're telling me that you're not over here making money on here for you to get your own PS5, or you don't have a job to, like, help yourself get a PS5 or everything. Instead, you gotta have your viewers donate this to you just so you can get a PS5 and review a game that we all know you're gonna fucking hate. Let's be honest about that. He doesn't like the new direction of the God of War game, okay? He's gonna hate God of War Ragnarok. He's already been talking about the game and saying how he doesn't seem like he's gonna like it at all from watching the trailers and stuff. So you're literally over here getting a PS5 from the money that your viewers are donating to you just so you can review a game that you're gonna shit on. Simply just to shit on it, okay? Not only that, man. God of War Ragnarok isn't only coming out for PS5, okay? You can literally just get a PS4, play it on there, get a PS4 Pro and play it on there, okay? You don't need a PS5 to do God of War Ragnarok, all right? You don't. Unless, I don't know, maybe you want to play it at 60 FPS, but how do you know it's not going to be 60 FPS on the PS4 Pro? It's not hitting 60 on the, on the base PS4. Let's be honest about that, okay? But even then, you don't need the 60 FPS. You can literally just play it on the base PS4 or the Pro. In addition to that, I had the idea to have an in-stream donation goal to go towards the PlayStation 5 that I need for God of War Ragnarok. I don't have a PS4 anymore, and I'm a huge God of War fan, so I want to play and review that game in the best presentation possible on a new console. I'm sure a lot of people are waiting for that video, given how notorious my original video is. Again, you don't need a PS5 in order to play and review God of War Ragnarok. Okay, I get it. You got rid of your PS4 or, or whatever, okay? You could have literally borrowed someone else's or just got it back or something, man. 
Okay, you don't need a PS5 to play God of War Ragnarok. And you also didn't need to set up a donation goal to where your viewers literally donated this money to you just so you can review a game that you're going to fucking hate. Let's be honest about that, okay? He was already hating on God of War Ragnarok before it even came out. After watching the trailer where he was literally talking about somehow it didn't seem like they addressed any of the darn criticisms that I had with God of War 2018. Yeah, who remembers that shit review? Like, it's okay to hate God of War 2018 in a new direction, but Jesus Lord, man, for you to literally get a freaking game console so you can just review one game that we all know you're going to hate, and then that's it? Like, you're a channel with over 100k subs and tons of views. You're telling me you're not making at least a small inkling enough of money to get a PS5 or something, or to get like a PS4 Pro or anything at all? I'm not going to get into my own personal financial situation, but hey, that shit's expensive and I don't even want a PS5, I just need it for this one game. So if people want to donate towards that, they can. People make donations on Twitch all the time. I don't see anything weird or scummy about that. If you do, fine. You see what I mean? This is what I'm literally talking about. He just wants a PS5 literally so he can shit on a game that he doesn't even want. He doesn't even want the PS5 yet, he just needs it apparently for this review where he's just going to be bashing out of a Ragnarok this November or whenever the hell he gets to play it after it drops, okay? I, it's, you know, it, it's cool. It's not my money after all. You guys can do whatever the heck you want with your money. I'm not telling you guys not to donate to him for this PS5 or whatever, but I don't know. It just feels a little bit shitty right here for you to set up a donation goal and have people get you a PS5 so you can review one game that you just, everybody already know you're most likely gonna hate on. I set it up so people could extend my suffering by one hour with a donation. We had enough donations to extend the stream by another four hours, and that's where I drew the line because I was getting drunk and becoming extremely irritable, which is what happens when you play a kind of game that makes you bored and miserable while having strangers coming into your chat and making the same comment every five minutes about how if you just do this or that, then you'd start to like this game that you don't like anything about that would probably piss you off too ah yes it would piss me off when there's literally people coming to my chat trying to help me figure out the game's mechanics or helping me out with telling me what items or that i should level up this if i'm having issues and stuff no nah, man it, it would totally piss me off under the mail when my own viewers are literally trying to help me play a game Despite the fact that I don't even like the darn game and nobody forced me to do it. So you know what I do? I just ban all of those who are trying to help me in chat because of course they were spamming the same thing over. They were trying to help you. But no, instead you just ban them in chat. Are you trying to blame this on you being drunk, which is why you acted the way you did on stream or whatever? Even then, you know, you know what they say about a drunken mind? A drunken mind has an honest heart under the mail. And even then, it didn't even seem like your own viewers and subs knew that you were drunk during the darn stream, but whatever. I guess maybe if you were drunk, my points still stand right there. So if all the videos trying to take this little, stupid, intentionally miserable stream designed to entertain a small viewership for charity and turn it into some huge controversy, if they were just making fun of me sucking at Elden Ring, that would be one thing and I could let it slide. But a lot of these people are sensationalist, uninformed, and or dishonest, completely leaving out the fact that we raised money for Doctors Without Borders, leading all their viewers to think that I called a secondary donation goal for a gaming console a charity. It's a really gross thing they're doing, and it's why I felt like I needed to come here and set the record straight. Will they cut that stuff out of their videos? We'll see. Again, I just addressed this point already in this video, and that's my fault on it for not realizing that you actually did have a charity goal during this live stream or before it, and it was actually met. That's a very good thing under the mail for you to have a charity goal that was met for Doctors with Borders. However, I still think that it's a little shitty for you to sit here and set up a secondary goal where you literally want your viewers to just donate money to you for a PS5 that you could possibly get on your darn own and also so you can review a game that we all know that you're most likely going to fucking hate and that's it that's all you want the PS5 for to make some shit review about God of War Ragnarok and then call it a darn day 
I thought I was doing something that a small group of viewers would get a kick out of, showing them what they wanted to see, what they donated to see, me suffering while playing Elden Ring so we could all have a laugh for charity. Well, I can tell you one thing, we all had a laugh except it seems you because even after the darn stream, you seem to be so fucking butthurt about what happened during the darn Elden Ring disaster stream of yours that you literally titled your darn next video on a game called Blazing Chrome. You was like some, thank God Blazing Chrome is not an open world RPG. And then in your community post that you got rid of, you literally said after torturing myself through Elden Ring, Blazing Chrome was a good palate cleanser. Sorry, I don't have a screenshot of it right now because he deleted that community post. Okay, update right here. I actually do have a screenshot of him saying this in the community post where he literally said that Blazing Chrome was a good palate cleanser. So I'm just going to put it up here on the screen for you all to see and they've completely morphed it into something it wasn't and was never supposed to be. I have people every day talking about this charity nonsense, so thanks a lot for that. This wasn't me just playing Elden Ring on stream for the hell of it and complaining that it sucks and refusing to play anything else. No, I was obligated to sit it out the whole time because that's what they paid for. They paid for a disaster, and that's what they got. Nowhere in that stream did I call Elden Ring a bad game, not once, regardless of my personal frustrations. I repeatedly said that I'm not calling it bad, or complaining about how it's designed. It's boring to me, it's not boring to a lot of other people, and that's all there is to it. No amount of exploring the world, or engaging in more combat, or leveling up my gear is gonna change how I feel about core aspects of games like these. Okay, so you call the game's combat clunky, you say the enemy, the art design, the bosses, the levels, you know, the whole world, the whole map, you know, the items, all of that, the armor and stuff was just boring, bland, and that you didn't want to do anything about it because it was just completely boring and bland to you, and all of us who are trying to make you engage the game in a fun way, it's not going to work because you're not going to like this game at all. So you literally go here and you call the game boring and bland and how you don't want to do nothing. But no, you're not insulting or calling the game bad, even though you said that you would rather play Outriders, a game that you deem to be absolutely horrible and you hate over Elden Ring. But no, the game isn't bad, you know, and you never once said that and you totally didn't you know, try to give that impression off at all. You can laugh at me for not liking a game that you like, or being an irritable son of a bitch on stream drinking to drown his misery, but don't lie about the charity goal. That's all I'm asking for. <sighs> Alright. Now let's get to the ultra kill stuff. Fuck. Oh man, here we go with some ultra kill stuff again. Brace yourself everybody, it gets worse from here. A lot of the stuff I talk about on my channel comes from people wanting to know my personal opinion about a game they like, asking me to play it, not doing the traditional objective reviewer thing. Ultra Kill was a highly requested game, so I felt like I should do it. And the first time I talked about Ultra Kill, I was antagonistic, that's pretty clear. But I also did it in what I thought was a pretty humorous way. I exaggerated it so far that it had to be taken as a joke. I foolishly thought, there's no way this community doesn't know it's pretty extreme and filled with people adverse to criticism. There's no way they don't know that, so I think a good number of them will just laugh this off. So you go ahead and think to yourself then, hmm, what's the best way to piss off the Ultra Kill community? Let's see. Um, oh, I know. Let's compare it to Doom Eternal and also let's make a shitty skit video where we literally paint the Ultra Kill community and its fans into a bad light and also antagonize them and make them seem like some crazed out people who will literally kidnap you and force you to say positive things about their games and to stop comparing it to Doom Eternal all the darn time. Yeah, because that's totally going to sit well with them, right? Despite the fact that they haven't really done anything to you at all under the mail. But now you wonder why the Ultra Kill community sees you in a bad light and have even banned you from their darn subreddit and stuff and do not want to be associated with you at all. Boy, was I wrong. I personally know a few Ultra Kill players that thought it was a funny idea, and it was my mistake to think that would be representative. And I went with that style of review because I already know how a lot of Ultra Kill fans, not all, but a lot of hardcore fans, how they respond to people criticizing their game. It's similar to From Software fans. If you don't like it, it means you suck. That's it. 
I mean, just look at how many people comment skill issue on a video where I'm criticizing Act 1 for being too easy. That doesn't even make sense. I had already seen firsthand how criticism is received. I'd seen it online, I'd seen it in my own stream when I first played Ultra Kill and found it dull because I didn't get it, and had everyone ripping on me for it. Wait a minute, so you mean to tell me that the first act or the first level of a darn game or the first area of a game is a bit too easy for you? Holy shit, Under the Mayo. It's almost like it's the first area, you know, and it's basically just an introduction to how the game is. And it's most likely going to get harder later on. I, I had no idea. Did you people know that? Uh, all of my viewers, did you did you know that, right? Hmm? That the first act or the first area of the game is easy. I already knew how some people in the fanbase would react to every single criticism I had. So I decided it would be more fun to do a review in the style of already knowing how they would react. Hostile. So, sure, I can't be upset at the Ultra Kill community for not liking me. I never set out to be their friend in the first place with a joke review. So you assumed how the Ultra Kill community would react to your review that you were going to drop and you decided to make a shitty skit video where you literally sit here and antagonize them and paint them in a bad light. I Are you hearing this everybody? I, I swear to you, this, this writes itself. He literally goes on to say that he made the video and painted them in that way because he felt that's how they were already going to paint him when he dropped his review. I, you know, you literally kicked the hornet's nest under the mail, okay? You shot your own self in the foot, man. And now you're over here wondering why the Ultra Kill community does not like you at all. But I did go on to enjoy Ultra Kill. I still have my core criticism that the first act doesn't show off what's fun about it through many consequences, but when I try to play fast and stylish, forcing myself to learn more mechanics, there's a lot of fun to be had and I think it's a good game. Because you can like a game and still criticize it. Look at Sifu, it's my game of the year and I've made multiple videos ripping apart the developers for ignoring huge issues in that game. I'm a very critical person and I criticize games I like and see potential in way more than games that just do nothing for me. You know, that's the thing with Under the Mayo right here is that he feels that developers should listen to any kind of points that he comes up with in his videos. Like the developers actually give a single shit about one YouTuber on this darn platform who criticizes some aspects of their games and he specifically goes out of his way to try and ask the devs to change it. Like they're really going to sit here and listen to your darn video and address every single feedback that you come up with yourself. Like it's some final darn say in the matter that whatever you come up with in your videos needs to be addressed or fixed, okay? Not only that, when it came to Sifu, they even did fix some of the things that Under the Mayo criticized in his darn review of the game in his review of easy mode. But he goes on to say that, oh, well, the things that they did add were worse and that they need to bring the other stuff back or that easy mode is too darn easy, you know, and that it doesn't push those who play easy mode into trying for a harder challenge. First of all, if you're already playing a game on easy mode, okay, it's probably because you don't want to be challenged and you just want to experience the story and what the game has to offer. So, of course, it's going to be fucking easy. It's literally in the name. Like, come on, man. This doesn't make any sense. And you also said how you were never going to review Sifu's easy mode because it's not for you and that you don't care about an easy mode. But then you go on to make this video complaining about easy mode and how it sucks because it's too easy. So crap on my views on Ultra Kill all you want, but you don't have to be dishonest by claiming Under the Mayo thinks Ultra Kill sucks because it's not Doom. That's flat out wrong, and you would know it's wrong if you were listening at all to what I'm saying. I was super positive about Act 2 and the balance changes. I had a lot of fun with this update. I don't play Ultra Kill with the pistol, guys. I don't. In my last three videos that mention Ultra Kill, you can see footage of me using different weapons. Ricocheting coins, parrying, using the whiplash, projectile boosting. Yes, I know about rail coin shots. I'm not very good at Ultra Kill, but I know what's fun about it, and I have fun playing it. 
I have fun playing Proteus too, even with my massive criticism of how the broken checkpoint system destroys all sense of challenge. I can still have fun with a game and disagree with this design philosophy. You see, it's okay to hate the design philosophy of Ultra Kill, but for you to sit here and constantly make multiple videos on it trying to change that design philosophy into something that you're more in tune with, to where it's like Doom Eternal or Proteus or any other boomer shooter or arena shooter you want to throw up there, that's where people have a darn issue because you're literally trying to, to change the developer's vision of their game. You want the game to have limited resources and ammo management. You also want the game to incentivize reasons for you to use certain weapons or combos and stuff, just like in Doom Eternal, or to push you through challenge with these darn systems by giving you like difficult enemies and like obstacles and stuff, instead of the way that Ultra Kill is already designed. I mean, Ultra Kill is already one of Steam's top sellers and one of its highest rated games, okay, on Steam. It doesn't need all these things that you keep trying to constantly change about it. You're over here trying to change the developer's vision of their game just because it doesn't fit with your vision of what an FPS should be apparently. When I talk about the piercer shot being too easy to rely on, that criticism is entirely focused on how the game communicates itself on the first playthrough. I personally think Piercer is too easy to lean on for a lot of Act 1, as you're learning the game, and I wish the game had more consequences for not engaging in more weapon variety. I'm sure you can say the same thing about other weapons as well, not just the Piercer, it's not necessarily just a problem with one gun. I know that if I had been punished more for playing in a boring way, I would have found the fun in Ultra Kill way sooner. If you disagree with me on this, fine. I mean, you are punished more for playing in a boring way though, under the mail. I mean, you're literally punished for playing terribly or dying. Your rank goes down and everything. You don't get that sweet P rank and all that stuff. I mean, I just started trying out Ultra Kill yesterday and it's actually a really good game. And the issues that you were talking about with the game, I'm not seeing them at all. In fact, after playing the game, the issues that you came up with and your dumb points for them were actually further cemented after I played the darn game. And honestly, I just don't see what the heck you're talking about. And I feel like having limited ammo in this game would severely detriment it. But I do know how to enjoy Ultra Kill, okay? I'm not just running around with the charge pistol all the time. I'm making a point about how the game presents itself, not how it ultimately ends up being played. And it's not about what you can do in a game once you're good at it. So many people are like, well, you can beat this game or that game by using one weapon, and you like that game, hypocrite. It's not about that. You can beat Resident Evil using just the knife once you're good at it, but give that game to a new player and tell them they can only use the knife and no healing items, and it's gonna be really fucking hard, and miserable, and frustrating. Way harder than if you actually try to use the options the game gives you. You see, that's the thing with you right here under the mail, is that you're trying to speak from the experience of a new player who's just picking up a game for the first time, yet most people who pick up a game for the first time and play it, and when they're presented with something shiny and new, like a new weapon or some armor and stuff like that, they'll automatically go try it out, test it, and see how it is. That's the thing right there under the mail. So I don't care about all the comments about beating games with one weapon. That's not the point. I'm talking about the experience of a new player and being able to lean on one thing too much as you are learning. And I don't want the game to force every mechanic either. People have this all or nothing perspective about what I'm trying to say on this channel when I thought I made it incredibly clear in my Challenge Matters and Does Style Matter videos. I'll reiterate. I think it's a game's responsibility to get people playing in a fun way through consequences, initially. If we have a game where there's 20 offensive and defensive options, I think it's bad if just one of those options works for a large part of the early sections as you're learning. I also think it's bad if you need to be using all 20 all the time. There are of course exceptions to these, I'm speaking generally. I think there should be some strong motivation through consequences to get you into the first few options. In this list of 20, I would say that engaging in 4 or 5 of these options should be necessary for surviving. 
and Ultra Kill does exactly that. You limited yourself to just using the darn piercer all throughout Act 1 and playing in a lame and boring way and then thinking that this is how the game is going to be and then you sat here and you made these terrible reviews about the game saying that Act 1 is just too easy and stuff and that you can just spam charge shot all the time and just never die or whatever. And once you're engaging in four or five, instead of just one, you start to see what's fun about this game. That's when the game gets its hooks in you. You start enjoying it, and then you start using even more options that maybe you don't even need to be using, but they're fun to use anyways and flashy. So you start working them in and creating a stylish playstyle. You start caring about leaderboards and speedruns and style meters because you're having fun. Okay, so is that really the game's fault then that you don't want to experiment with new things or that you find the game boring and stuff? I mean, what if I say the same thing about Doom Eternal and its combat or its enemies and level design and say that it doesn't interest me in any way or that this is boring to me and I don't want to experiment with the game's design philosophy and try out new techniques and combos like Super Shotgun, Ballista, or, you know, the grenade or the darn freaking um, blood punch and stuff? By the halfway point, I'm kind of okay with it in a lot of situations, because if the game has already gotten me playing in a fun way, I'll keep playing in a fun way even when I don't have to. If we absolutely must talk about Doom Eternal, and I suppose we do, this is why it's so dumb to have people saying, well you don't have to quick swap in Doom Eternal, when I criticize other games for not making their mechanics feel important. It's not about every mechanic being important, especially not the ones used by experienced players. It's about a few solid fun mechanics being important, to inspire you to find the rest on your own. That's how I can make a bunch of videos about niche weapon tech like full auto strategies and microwave beam explosion falters, even though they aren't necessary to survive at all. The game already got me interested in how it's played, so I look for more fun. If a game doesn't get me interested in how it's played on a basic level, the higher level tech and options don't interest me. What are the baseline requirements for fun in Ultra Kill? What do you need to be using? Dash, up close kills for health regen, and weapon variation. That's the minimum. If you're not doing that as you're learning the game, you're not having fun. What? I, I'm sorry, what? 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 This is what I need in order to have fun in Ultra Kill? I'm sorry, man. I don't, I don't, I don't think you understand what's fun about Ultra Kill. Then, if you think those are what's required to have fun, fun is subjective, buddy. When I first picked up Ultra Kill, those three components right there is not what made me have a blast. Okay, like I was literally just sitting over here shooting demons and stuff, styling on them, you know, getting my darn health back and using that little freaking rocket punch thing that I got off of V2. That's what I was having fun doing. Not whatever the heck you're talking about, Dash. Everything else comes after that, and I think Act 1 of Ultra Kill fails at getting you into the minimum if you aren't already looking for it. Whether it's addressed through enemy AI changes, or a new resource system, or enemy damage in new difficulties, I don't care. But I wish it would change. I know it's probably not, but it's how I feel. And there's plenty of games that I love that commit the very same problem I accuse Ultra Kill of having. I've picked up shooters that are horribly balanced and gone on to enjoy them on deep levels simply because I like the art style and the way the weapons feel. I'm not always 100% turned off from a game if it doesn't present challenge the right way. But if someone wanted to criticize a game like that that I enjoy, I welcome them to do so. I won't complain about someone saying the original God of War was too easy to play in a simple way. I know the game's flaws, I like it for a lot of other reasons. So again, the people making these videos claiming that I say Ultra Kill sucks because it isn't Doom are lying. I have never said Ultra Kill sucks. I think there are things that could be better, but I've never said it's a shitty game. And when the full game is finally released, it'll probably make my best of the year list judging by how solid Act 2 is. You can criticize my ideas and my tone all you want, but I'm pretty sure the four different videos I've done on Ultra Kill have all clearly stated that I enjoy the game. I don't know about that, Under the Mayor. Are you sure that's the hill you want to die on there, buddy? You sure you want to take that stance? I'm pretty sure three out of the four videos that you've did on Ultra Kill completely disproved that darn point right there that you just said. 
I mean, in one of the videos, you literally sit here and antagonize and attack the ultra kill community. But I'm just saying, you know, you're saying that you don't hate ultra kill. So I'll take your word for it. Hell, the very first line of even the joke review is ultra kill is a pretty good game. The joke was just saying that wouldn't be enough. And it wasn't. Oh yeah, where you say it yourself, yet you're literally in the perspective of a fan of Ultra Kill who is over here freaking kidnapping someone and forcing them to say positive things about the game. Yeah, I'm really going to take your word on that, that you... Let's just play the clip in context so you guys can understand what I'm saying. Siéntate, cabrón. No te muevas. Viene el jefe. Hello, Abel. I understand you've prepared a statement about Ultra Kill for us. Yes, I have. You want me to start? Yeah, just keep in mind everything we discussed earlier. <sighs> Ultra Kill is a pretty good game. Excuse me? Ultra Kill is a great game. I think we can do better than that. Okay. Ultra Kill is one of the greatest games ever made. That's better. It's a retro style first person shooter published by New Blood Interactive, the company that published Amid Evil and Dusk, and it's in early access. It has a lot of different guns, and they are cool. Cool? The guns are cool? Just because I think regenerating infinite ammo through the style meter instead of it being automatic would be more interesting, something I said would be fine as just an optional game mode, doesn't mean I want the game to literally be Doom. Thousands of games have ammo management, not just Doom. I have enjoyed games with resource management all my life. I used different weapons in Duke Nukem 3D and Twisted Metal because I ran out of ammo. And games that have infinite ammo, games like Contra or 1942, usually punish you for playing badly in other ways. I'm just looking for some more consequences, whether it's through ammo management or something else. Doom Eternal and Ultra Kill already share a lot of mechanics. They may have different design philosophies in Act 1, but they share design philosophies in Act 2, holding you accountable and pushing you into fun playstyles to survive. And I'm willing to bet that if Ultra Kill originally had auto-regenerating health, and I came along suggesting you should be able to recharge health by killing enemies in their face, to encourage players to push into the combat zone instead of run away, an army of Ultra Kill players would be accusing me of trying to make the game like Doom by including glory kills, when that very Doom mechanic is already there. I mean, I don't think you're wrong about that under the mail. I'm pretty sure they would, but... The question is, would they be right or wrong? I mean, you literally can't stop the comparison from FPS games being compared to Doom Eternal. I mean, look at the video before this one where you literally said Hyper Demon is the Doom Eternal of Devil Daggers. And in the video, you go on and say right at the beginning, I got you, didn't I, with the title. Yeah, you sure did. You know, you call that a gotcha moment right there. But... You literally do be comparing every single FPS to darn Doom Eternal, man. I mean, come on now. Is it really a gotcha moment when there's some truth to the things that you say? So let's stop all of this. 
ultra kill players, your game is great. I know that what I suggest will probably never happen, and it's a freak accident that the style meter health regen system that I recommended actually ended up in the game. It sure is, because the ultra kill community and possibly the devs don't even like you anyway because you sat there and antagonized them in your video about them. So why would they really listen to any kind of feedback that you talked about with their game anyway? I mean, come on now, Under May, are you seriously trying to take credit for that fact? Also, if you understand that Ultra Kill's design philosophy is different from Doom Eternal's, then why do you keep constantly trying to change it? With that addition, I'm pretty happy, and I know the game is going to go on to see many more great additions in Act 3. I'm sure there's going to be more response videos to my response video to their response videos. I'm happy I could generate some traffic for you guys, have fun, but I am done. I think that's it. I'm ready to move on. I'm sure most of you are. I'm ready to get into some classic Resident Evil for October and have some fun. I hope I've clarified everything here. It'll be nice to be able to just send a link to this video instead of responding to people individually. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for listening. Whether you like my channel or you don't, I think we can all agree we've had a pretty good year having a lot of great games come out. There's been a lot to talk about. Thanks for watching. And that's the end of Under the Mayo's video. Overall, I feel like this whole response to the situation was pretty fucking terrible, but I want to hear you guys' thoughts and opinions about his response video down below. What do you guys think about this whole situation? I mean, his fans are over here defending his darn actions and stuff and saying that he did nothing wrong, you know, and that people are just trying to drag his darn name through the mud and that we all hate him and we're just, you know, hopping on a hate bandwagon. Like, honestly, man... It just doesn't make any sense to me at all, okay? I'm not trying to drag his name through the mud. I'm not trying to get his subscribers to, you know, leave his darn community or unsubscribe from his darn channel. That's not what I make these videos for, okay? I'm literally just calling out his darn hypocrisy and the dumb points that he made. I honestly do not care if you like Under the Mayo yet you know, you agree with my darn video. I'm not trying to make you guys unsubscribe from his darn channel or anything, okay? I'm literally just trying to call him out for his darn hypocrisy and stuff right here. That's all these videos are. I mean, nobody is exempt from criticism on this darn platform at all, okay? Yet, Under the Mail and his fans want to act like he can't be criticized for the dumb takes and things that he do on here. If I ever say some hypocritical or dumb stuff on this darn platform and backpedal on the things that I say, I want my community and my subscribers and viewers to call me out about it. And I want others like other content creators, you know, to call me out about the things that I'm doing on this platform because I'm not exempt from criticism either. If I start doing stupid stuff, then I expect all of you to start calling me out about it and help me get back on the darn right path instead of just standing idly by and not saying anything or pretending that I'm doing no wrong or trying to defend my actions when I'm clearly in the wrong about stuff. I feel like more people need to have this mindset nowadays that no one is exempt from criticism and that they need to learn how to take it in strides, especially when they are actually in the wrong and they should just own up to the actions that they did. But anyway, with that being said, this is me, Mitsuni Nika. I will see you all in the next video. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'm out. I've been counting down the days, counting down the days to get out I've been looking for a way, looking for a way from this town And you're too far away, you're too far away to help me now So I'm counting down the days, counting down the days to